What's up YouTube family? Welcome back to VW Family Farm and today I've got another great holiday recipe for you that I wanted to share with you. Our family really enjoys this. I take it to a lot of family gatherings and potlucks. Another disclaimer, this is not something we eat on a daily basis, but it is a good treat for around the holidays. And the thing Ben loves about it, it involves sweet potatoes. So I'm using things that we've grown that we have an abundance of uh, to go to all these different potlucks and still take something that people are excited and think is really good. The first step is super easy. Now you can do this a variety of ways. I'm going to do this step and walk away for a bit. You can boil your sweet potatoes, that's what I did for years, or now that I have an instant pot, which I love, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take whole sweet potatoes, I'm going to trim them up, trim off bad spots or the ends or whatever you want, but I'm not going to peel them. Now, if you're going to boil them at this point, you might want to go ahead and peel them, but it's not absolutely necessary because after they cook in the instant pot or boil, the uh, peeling is going to slip off like what I call a jacket. That's what my mom always called it. It's just going to slip right off and so you're not going to have to sit there and peel and peel. So that's the way I prefer to do it. Do whatever you want at that point. I've used, these are just some smaller size sweet potatoes, but I have used enormous ones. Some of our sweet potatoes that we grow, um, they're almost the size of like a football. So I'll just chunk those into um, two or three big chunks and just toss them in as well. I'm not using any of those today, but I wanted to mention that. It's a great way to use those enormous ones too. Now, finished product, you want to wind up with about three cups of pureed sweet potatoes. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, I've never been super technical about that. I just do a little bunch of them. Like today, I'm going to do, these are smaller. I call this these two like medium. That's what I'm going to do today. I've done a big one in the past or just whatever. It's not super technical. It's going to turn out fine if you use a little less or if you use more. So it's fine. So I'm just going to toss these. I'm going to trim the ends off and toss them in this Insta pipe. Okay, so you can see I kind of cut all of those in half um, just because that makes them cook quicker. Uh, you don't have to do that, but um, it just sure makes them cook quicker. So I'm gonna add a cup of water. Now this is where you could use your rack that comes with your Instapot and set them up on that. I just don't wanna dig it out and it works fine just like this too. So I'm gonna put the lid on. This is so super simple. I'm gonna turn it to ceiling, which is back. That's venting. I'm gonna turn it to ceiling. I'm gonna push manual and I'm gonna do these about 15 minutes and I've even done ones larger than this for about that same amount of time so they're gonna be super cooked by that point and then I'm just gonna walk away and then we'll come back and mix it all up all right so the sweet potatoes got cooked so let's proceed this is really easy we're just gonna mix it all up and bake it first thing is we're gonna preheat our oven and then I'm gonna show you how um, to get the sweet potatoes out of the skins really easily so we are going to bake this at 350. Okay, so you can see they are cooked really well. Now these are hot. Ideally, if you are fixing these for lunch, you would get up first thing and cook these and let them cool for a while before you have to mix this up. But I don't have that kind of time today, so I'm just gonna be very careful. I'm using a slotted spoon to get them out of that water because you don't want the water. It'll make your casserole runny. I'm gonna put them in my KitchenAid mixer. And even though this is hot, the skin is not hot. So I'm just going to gently take that off. If I left any in there, I'll just use my spoon just to get that off. And just a little tip on sweet potato casserole, the very end of the potato, a lot of times we'll have a little spot that has these strings. They're not gonna hurt anything. It's just you might get a couple strings in your mouth if you don't remove that. That's usually on the end of the sweet potato. So I'm just gonna do that to all these, get them out and the skins off and into this bowl. Okay, from this point, it's just add all the ingredients. It's super easy. We're gonna add a stick of butter. It doesn't have to be cut up. That's just frozen, so I kinda chunked it up a little bit. A half a cup of milk. I am eyeballing all of this, but these are the exact measurements I'm telling you an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a cup of sugar or natural sweetener of your choice, two 
two eggs, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And I like the Azure Market brand, of course. That's my favorite vanilla. And there's always a link below to Azure Market. I usually buy their cinnamon, several of the things in this. When I'm out of butter, I buy butter from them. There's always a link below. Um, let's go check their website out. It's a great place to order groceries. This butter is going to bounce around a tad. If your butter is thawed, it would just mix right in. But I didn't think ahead, so it's frozen. Okay, so all you're doing here is mixing all this up. Um, you can do this by hand, or like I said, I'm doing it in my KitchenAid. However, but just get all this um, blended well together. Okay, next step is just put in a casserole dish. This is a 9 by 13. All right, here's the final piece to this recipe. We're gonna take a fourth of a stick of butter. I washed my bowl, um, so I'm using my same mixing bowl. We're gonna take half a cup of flour, a cup of brown sugar, and normally at this point I would add a cup of chopped pecans as well but I'm taking this to a homeschool meeting um, and there will be a lot of kids there and just for the sake of nut allergies I'm leaving them off this time but normally I would add those here and they're really good on the top. So I'm just going to blend really well. Um, this butter, once it gets broken up, will make like a crumble topping mixed with this flour and brown sugar. And then we're going to sprinkle that on top. Alright, so you're just going to use your hand. You're going to have to. It's hard to do with the spoon. And you're just going to sprinkle this all over the top. Like I said, it works best with the nuts because it gives it a little um, more consistency here um, rather than leaving those out. But you can leave them out. I've done it multiple times because we have um, certain dietary restrictions in our family. Some people can't eat nuts and um, so it can be done. I'm just going to sprinkle that evenly. And then we're going to pop it into the oven. All right, so this is what it looks like. Some of the places in the crumble when you don't add the nuts um, look a little lighter and darker because the butter kind of coats the nuts and they get spread evenly. So it's a little bit different when you don't add the nuts, but still equally as good. I hope you give this a try. It's super easy and I promise you it will be a hit at your party. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see y'all tomorrow. God bless.